Hey, Austin, who are we going to draw today? SpongeBob. Yeah, we're going to draw SpongeBob. We hope you're going to follow along with us. You need your drawing supplies. We always like using markers, but we're also going to use a pencil. You need your, some paper and... Something to color with. Yeah, and we're also using marker paper because we're going to color with markers at the very end. Yeah. You ready to start? Yeah. Let's first use our pencil and we're going to draw SpongeBob's eyes together. So we're, first we're going to draw two circles. We're going to draw them about this size. I'm going to draw it. I'm going to press hard. You can go back over it if you want to change your circle. That's the nice thing about using pencils is you can go back over it. You can change your drawing before you use your marker to get it just the way you want it before you actually put the marker. See how I went over it a couple times? You don't need to do that a couple times. But if you wanted to, see how you got a little bump right here? You could draw it there and then come out a little bit further and make it look more like a circle. Yeah, there you go. Look at that, that's awesome. And then you could add another circle right next to the first one. And you wanna make sure that they touch, yeah. There you go, ooh yeah. Yes, I love practicing. You see how it's got a little point up here? Mm -hmm. So now you could draw, draw it again and see if you could make it look a little bit more round. Yeah, look at that. Ah, oh, that's some good practicing. Good job, us. Now we're going to switch to our eraser and we can erase the extra lines if we want. I like using pencils. Not for everything. Yeah, it does let you erase and practice. But I also like using markers so we don't do a lot of erasing. And then I'll use my little sweeper to get the shavings off so we don't smear the, the pencils. Right onto your lap. <laughs> now we're going to switch to our marker. Let's add his nose. We're going to draw an upside down U in between the two eyes. We're going to come up, around, and then back down. But look, on this side we're going to come down further. So draw an upside down U, but it's longer on the right side. So we'll start over here. Come up around and back down. Yeah, and then a little longer. Okay, now let's draw his cheek. We're gonna draw the left cheek first. We're gonna come around like this and we're gonna draw an upside down U. Yeah. Then we're gonna do the same thing over here. We'll draw another upside down U for his right cheek. Starting to look like SpongeBob. Mm -hmm. Well, not really. <laughs> not really? Maybe a little bit more. The nose. Yeah, the nose. Okay, now we're going to draw his mouth. We're going to start here inside of his cheek, and we're going to draw him happy. We're going to come down like this, and then we're going to come back up, and we'll stop inside his other cheek. Let's go from one side to the other. Let's add his little cheek lines inside. Then we can add another one over here. What else should we add to his mouth? His teeth. Yeah, let's add teeth. We'll draw two lines coming down from the middle of his smile. Yes, and then we're gonna draw a line that comes out on the left. And then we'll draw that same length line on the right. Then we're gonna draw a line that connects back up to the smile on each side. Now it's starting to look like SpongeBob. Yeah. Okay, now let's draw his pupil. First, we're gonna draw a circle that's about this size. We're gonna draw, we could draw him a little cross. Sometimes he looks cross-eyed, right? <laughs> yeah. So let's draw a circle about that size. And we're gonna draw another circle over here the same size. <laughs> then we're gonna color in those little circles. Leave the little one white. It, not on this one. <laughs> yeah, we usually do. But <laughs> now we're gonna draw another circle that comes around that's bigger. This is for his the blue part of his eye. And then we're gonna draw another one the same size over here. Wow, it's really starting to look like SpongeBob. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna draw over the pencils, except let's first use our the eraser on our pencil. You can, yeah, let's put a cap on our marker. Then we're gonna use the eraser and we're just gonna erase the eye that's going through his cheek and also yeah, erase the eye that's going through his nose, both, both eyes. And we can do the same thing on this cheek over here. Brush those shavings away and we're going to switch back to our marker and we're going to come in and we're going to add, we're going to go over our pencils. So we're going to trace over the pencil line like that. 
And then we want to make sure that we don't draw the eye through the cheek or the nose. That's why we erased it. And we're going to draw the bottom part of the eye coming through. And that's one of the great things about using the pencil so that it, we can use it as guidelines. And now his eye looks like a circle. Mm -hmm. Even though we have a nose and a cheek that goes in front of it. And then we come over and we do the same thing for his eyes over here. Draw another, draw the bottom, and then we can also, let's switch back to our eraser and we're going to erase the guidelines where the marker, where we drew over with the marker. So there's no pencil lines that you can see. What's he missing on his eyes? His eyelashes. Yeah, his eyelashes. Let's draw one line coming straight out of the top of each eye. And then we're going to draw another eyelash on each side of that first one we drew. And we can actually go back over each line so they look a little thicker. So I'm going to draw another line right next to it, make them thicker. Yes. Oh, I like how long you made them. I love that our two drawings don't look exactly the same. They're both turning out awesome. Yeah. And it's okay if their drawings are different too, because the most important thing is to have fun. Yeah, and to practice. Practice. All right, let's keep practicing. Now we're going to add his little chin or his lip underneath his tongue. We're going to, or underneath his teeth. We're going to draw a little curve. It comes up in the middle, back down, and then back up. Then we're going to draw his head. We're going to start up here and we're going to start over here, way over here in the corner. And we're going to draw a line that comes down. And we're going to draw a wavy line because he's a sponge, right? Yeah. He looks like a sponge. We're going to come all the way over to the other side of our paper. Ugh, he's awesome. I love SpongeBob so much. You're doing good. Keep going. And we're going to do the same thing down lower, right underneath his chin. But we're, we're going to make the same wavy line. We're going to come down and we're going to make it shorter. So we're, gonna, we're only going to make it about this long. So we'll start here, and I'm, this time I'm going to go up first, and then down. And then we're going to come across over to the other side, like that, and then the last one I'm going to kind of aim down, too. Yeah. <laughs> you're, doing, you're doing awesome. Okay, now we're going to draw the sides. We're going to start over here, and we're going to draw a corner, or a rounded corner first, and then we're going to draw the wiggly lines coming down like this. And then at the very bottom, we're going to draw another rounded corner at the very bottom. <laughs> now it looks like SpongeBob. Mm -hmm. <laughs> draw little wiggly lines and coming all the way down. Yeah. Oh, I love that little corner up there. <laughs> okay. Now we can draw the other side too. So I'm going to curve around and then we're going to draw the wiggly line, bumpy line coming down and then curve into the bottom. <laughs> yes, yes. That looks like his ears. I know, <laughs> I like it. It looks really cool. You know, SpongeBob during the cartoons, sometimes he changes into different shapes. So it works perfect. He could have little ears like that. <laughs> okay, now let's draw his square pants. We're gonna draw a diagonal line that comes down over here on the left and also a diagonal line over here on the right. And we're going to angle them in just like we're doing with the sides. So I'm going to draw this even a little further down too. There we go. Then we can draw his shirt and also his pants. Maybe just a little bit longer on each side. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to draw a straight line to connect these two. I turn my paper sideways to make it a little easier to draw that straight line. Yeah. Now let's draw his collar. We're gonna draw, we're gonna draw an upside down V right here. We're gonna go up and then down. And then over here on the left, we're gonna draw a curved diagonal line that comes up and connects to his. That's his white collar. Now let's draw his tie. We're gonna draw the knot first. We're gonna come down and then back up. Then we're going to draw the bottom part of his tie. We're going to come out on each side. And then you could draw it a little longer, <laughs> maybe <laughs> just a little bit. And then down at the bottom, we're going to draw a V to connect those two lines together. All right. Now we're going to draw his pants or the top 
of his pants, the bottom of his shirt. And we're gonna split this shape in half. So we're gonna measure with our eyes and we're gonna draw a line that comes straight across and connects to the tie in the middle. We're gonna imagine it going behind his tie and coming across and connecting to the other side. Yeah. All right, now let's draw the bottom of his pants. We're gonna draw two lines that come out from the middle. And then we're gonna draw the outside of his pants, or they kind of look like shorts. Yeah. Like he's wearing business shorts. And then we're gonna draw and we're gonna connect the bottom of his pants across on each side. And now we're ready to draw his legs sticking out of his shorts. So we'll draw two lines coming down out of that one and also this one. Two skinny legs. Yeah. And we want to make sure we're leaving room for his shoes all the way down here at the bottom. So we're going to connect the bottom of his legs. Then we can draw the top of his socks. We'll draw another curve about in the middle of his leg. Yeah. And then let's draw his shoes. First, we're going to draw the inside or the heel. So we'll draw a backward C on this one. And then we're going to draw a frontward C on the other side. Yes. Now we're going to draw just a small little curve, diagonal curve coming forward. We're drawing both feet at the same time because we're repeating the same step. Now this part's a little tricky. We're going to draw a big C shape like this. But watch, we're going to keep going and we're going to come all the way across. We can connect to his heel. Big backward C. Yes, and then all the way back. Let's do the same thing on the right, except backwards. We're going to come around and then connect back in. Okay, now down here at the bottom, we need to draw the heel on his shoes. So we'll draw two short lines coming out. Yes, and then connect the bottom. Let's do the same thing on the right. Two lines coming out and then connect the bottom. We finished his legs and his feet, but what is he missing? His arms. Yeah, he's missing his arms. We're gonna draw his short sleeves first. We'll start here, right below the sponge and his shirt. We're gonna draw a little curve that comes out like that. Then let's connect it up into the sponge. Let's do the same thing over here. Let's repeat the same thing, same way that we did the feet, we're gonna repeat, except flip it for the other side. And then we'll come up and connect his sleeve in. Now we're gonna draw his hands and his arms and they come right next to his body. We're gonna come down and stop at the bottom of his square pants. And then we'll do the same thing over here. <laughs> now let's draw his hand. We're gonna draw a curve that comes out like this and we're gonna curve down. So we'll curve around and about that far down. Looks like his hand is a scoop. It does, yeah, like or a spatula. Okay, now let's draw his thumb. Right here we're gonna draw a U, a small U inside of that little curve right there. Okay, on the top of his thumb, he has a curve, another bump. It's like this muscle on his thumb. Yeah, okay, now let's come back down and we're gonna finish his first finger right there into his thumb. Now let's draw another finger coming into his thumb. And now the last finger, watch this, is gonna come out, curve up, and connect to his pants. Go right next to his thumb and then connect up to his pants. Yes, you did it. Now we're gonna repeat that same step over here for his other hand. We're gonna curve the other direction and down to the same place as we did over here on the left. Okay, what was the next step? Um, his thumb. Yeah, his thumb. And it was just a small skinny U shape with an extra bump on the top for that little muscle. Yes, now let's finish his first finger right here into his thumb. And then we're gonna have another finger coming out and then connect to his thumb. And then we're gonna do that last finger that almost looks like it's gonna connect to his thumb, but then it curves up and connects 
to his pants. Austin, we did it. We finished drawing SpongeBob, but we still need to do one more step. Well, a lot of steps. Yeah, color it. Yeah, we need to color him. This part, we are going to fast forward because we're not doing anything super tricky. We're just going to color him solid. But when we're all done, remember you can pause the video to match our same coloring. You ready to fast forward? Yeah. I changed my mind. I don't think we should fast forward. <laughs> I think we should tell our, our friends what we're doing. So we, we in the past, we fast forwarded yeah. the coloring part. And I thought that was a lot of fun. But uh, I also think that a lot of our art friends want to know how we color our drawings. And so I thought it would be cool. We, I think we should do more videos where we talk about how we're coloring and not just fast forward. Yeah. Now, if you want to, you guys at home, guys and girls at home, if you want to, you can fast forward the video. And also, I'll leave time codes below this video in the description so that you can skip forward to certain parts. And you don't have to, if you don't want to watch us color SpongeBob, you can skip forward and you don't have to watch. I like coloring and it's one of my favorite things to do and I think it would be so awesome if we talk, talk about it when we uh, are actually coloring. We're using markers and this first color that we're using is Y107 and we're using biannual markers. One of the things that's so tricky with markers and one of the more challenging things to do is color it so that it looks solid. And so it doesn't blend with the... Yes, Black. that is a challenge that we always have with our markers. If you, especially with the lighter colors like yellow, if you go just over the black Sharpie, it'll smear it or blend it. And um, that's on purpose. That's It's supposed to do that because you want, sometimes you want to be able to blend your colors together. Problem is, is that you don't always want to blend your colors together. Yeah. So you have to be careful. And sometimes I don't color right to the edge. I'll leave a little white uh, space in between the Sharpie and then also the, the yellow. And um, so also what I was saying is it's tricky because when you're coloring, sometimes it looks patchy or it looks like you can see layers, layer texture, and you really just want it to be a solid yellow. So to try and do that or fix that, we color really fast and try to keep all of the markers wet or keep the marker wet as you're working through it or at least the edge wet and then you can keep moving to the next spot. Mm -hmm. So if you color really fast, then you can keep the, the texture looking solid if you move quickly. But also when you move quickly, sometimes you smear the marker, yeah. right? <laughs> All right, now I got the whole thing colored in yellow. You keep going. You're doing a great job, Austin. I forgot I need to color his hands, and I was just sitting waiting for you to finish. I forgot I got to add yellow to his arms and also his hands. Oh, don't forget to color his legs yellow. All right, now I'm all finished with my yellow. I'm going to put that off to the side. You keep going. Don't worry about going fast. But once in a while, I think during the lesson, we will skip forward. So this part, we're just coloring in the sponge, SpongeBob yellow. Yeah. Just color it solid. All right, keep going. Now let's switch to our red R107, and I'm going to use the little point, and we're going to add three little dots on his cheeks, like that. Little freckles. And we're going to add those same three dots on the right side, too. Yes. Oh, and I like that you're using the thick part. You can use the point if you want to, but... Good job. All right, now let's switch to a blue. This is going to seem really weird. But we're going to do B201. That's this one right here. We're layering this on top of our yellow. And this is for the little spots to make them look like a sponge. So this might seem weird, but when we combine it, it's going to turn into green. So I'm going to do an oval about this size and then color it in. You can even layer it a couple times if you need to to make it darker. Well, we'll wait till that dries and then even add another layer on top. Let's add a smaller oval right here. And we're going to add a small one down here. And then also a bigger one underneath that one. All right. Let's switch it over here. Let's do a little one, little oval, and a big oval. 
and we'll do one little one up here on the top right. I think that's dried, so I'm going to come back over and add one more layer on top to make those ovals darker. If you're layering your markers like how we're layering, where you put the blue on top of the yellow, you can use a scratch piece of paper to clean off the yellow on your blue marker. That, that way the next time you use your blue marker, it doesn't look green yeah. and you wonder what happened. Yeah, okay, now let's put that marker off to the side. We could put our scratch paper down and we're gonna switch to a slightly darker blue, B203, for his eyes. And we're gonna color around the pupil the whole thing in. Now oh, he's starting to come to life. He looks so cool, Austin. Yeah, but not moving. Come to life. Yeah, well, yeah. I hope he doesn't come to life. <laughs> yeah. Like when he draws himself and then he comes out of the paper and attacks him. Oh yeah, I remember that episode. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> okay, now let's switch to our red again. I forgot. Let's do the tie next. This is R R107. It's a dark, dark or deep red. And then, oh, before we get rid of that, let's switch to little to the fine point, and we're gonna add a red stripe on his sock. And it's right about in the middle of his sock. I'm gonna switch back to the blue. I totally forgot, the same one we used for his eyes, we're gonna use for a little stripe, a blue stripe on his socks. There we go. And that's B203. Down here at the bottom, yeah, on top of the red stripe. Next, we're gonna switch to a brown. Oh, you colored all of his socks in blue. That oh. looks really cool. <laughs> I like it, that's cool. Maybe he has different socks this time. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're gonna switch to our brown, Y529. And this is a just a regular brown and we're gonna color in his square pants. I'm gonna use the flat edge of the marker. There you go, B, or not B, Y529. And we're gonna come in and color in his pants solid. Gonna go all the way across like this, color it in. It's a lot easier to color shapes that are smaller and to make them look solid without any texture. There we go, that looks awesome. He's missing something on his pants though. He has a belt that keeps his pants up. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, you do the bottom part of his pants too, right here, his shorts, business shorts. There you go. Now we're gonna switch to Y648. This is a darker brown. And we're gonna use the small side of our chisel. We're gonna turn it sideways. This is so that we can draw a dashed line. Now we're gonna wait for that to dry and we're gonna add another stripe. So we're gonna do one long stripe right next to his belt. We leave a little space and we're gonna draw another stripe right there. And we'll do the same thing on the right side. Go back and forth so that it's really dark. And we'll do another one. I'm gonna wait for the left side to dry and then come back over and add another layer on top. So it's a, it's a dark brown. Our last step, we're gonna switch to our black and we're gonna color in his shoes solid black. Also come down and make sure to color in his heel too, the whole thing. It looks like the exact same color as the marker. It does, the Sharpie? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. Come over here and color in this other foot. All the way out. I love SpongeBob shoes. It's actually one of my favorite parts of his uh, outfit are his shoes. They're dress shoes. And then he's got the shorts and you can see his socks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We did it, we finished coloring and drawing SpongeBob. I love your drawings so much. I went around and also added a thicker line, but you can leave that off to keep the lesson a little easier. Another thing that's really cool about this lesson now is you know how to draw SpongeBob. Yeah. You could draw him doing a different funny face, not just smiling, maybe he's screaming. Or yeah. you, <laughs> you could also draw him flipping Krabby Patties, working <laughs> at the Krusty Krab. And you could also add a background. Yes, the Krusty Krab in the background or his pineapple would look really cool. We hope you have a lot of fun.
hope you enjoyed SpongeBob. Yeah, we do. We hope you had a lot of fun. Remember, it's okay if your drawing looks different than ours. I hope it does. I hope you change your drawing. Add a background, and maybe even change his face. Oh, you could draw Gary on top of his head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll see you later, our friends. Goodbye. Goodbye.